Hello everyone. I am Dr. Bandala Rajan, Assistant Professor, Department of Dermatology or ADR Dermatology Faculty. Welcome you all for the NEET PG Recall session for the Dermatology 2023. As I gone through the question pattern from my friends, juniors, I came to know following pattern has been followed in the exam. Like more questions are asked in nutritional deficiencies in dermatology, sexually transmitted diseases, HIV and infectious diseases. And when I saw the questions, many questions were linked to two or more subjects like community medicine, pediatrics, like that. And many questions are like application based questions. They are not directly asked. We need to apply our uh, knowledge to get the answer. And somewhere having some ambiguous options also. Those are the issues in the question paper. We will start with the first question. I divided the questions based on the topics they have asked. First, you will see about nutritional deficiencies. The first question asked was, a patient presented with diarrhea, dementia and dermatitis. What is the deficiency? The options given are vitamin B3, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B4. You see, in this question, the main clues are these three. Diarrhea, dementia and dermatitis. Three Ds. We have already discussed this in previously. If three Ds are the dermatitis, diarrhea and dementia, it is towards pellagra. There is another fourth D which is uh, death. Now we have to see Pellagra is due to which vitamin deficiency? Pellagra is, you know, it is due to niacin deficiency. But the option is not given here. Like B3, B1, B2, B4. Niacin is also known as vitamin B3. We know this uh, from first year itself. B1 is known as thiamine. B2 is riboflavin. So the option here is niacin. It's a straightforward question. Only thing we have to know is niacin is vitamin B3. We know the features of niacin deficiency. There is a dermatitis, dementia, diarrhea and fourth is death. Apart from that, in the dermatitis part, in the skin you can see the castle necklace and photo distributed rash. Next question. A baby presented with perioral erosions and diarrhea. Which deficiency lead to this? The options given are zinc, copper, iron. This is somewhat a tricky question. We will come by option by option. First, if there is an iron deficiency, they would have given options like clues like coilonychia, anemia. Those things would have been there. So those are not there. So iron deficiency won't be an option here. If there is a copper deficiency, we know copper related things are like Wilson's, Minky Kinky disease, there will be K of ring, K Shakishar ring. Apart from that, patient will have a kinking hair, those choices also not there. Now we will come to zinc. Zinc deficiency in children is related to a condition known as acrodermatitis centropathica. The name itself implies entropathica means which is related to GAT. So there will be more diarrhea. Acrodermatitis means there will be skin lesions in the acral areas and periorifacial, mainly perioral, periorbital area, there will be lesions. So with the name itself we can identify. So the diagnosis given here is Acrodermatitis centropathica due to perioral erosions and diarrhea. One skin and one GI compliant. So the option, correct option is zinc in this question. Apart from these things, the patient also have alopecia. That is also very important. Third question is, a baby presented with alopecia and skin lesions. Patient regularly feed baby with a raw egg. Which of the vitamin deficiency is associated? The options given are biotin, riboflavin, niacin. Here, the clues given are first clinical features, alopecia and skin lesions. 
and the very important clue here is they feed baby with raw egg if you see raw egg in the clue we have to know one point raw egg contains avidin avidin is a substance which inhibits biotin we all know biotin tablets are regularly used for hair fall treatment so in the image itself they have shown hair fall and the skin lesions of biotin deficiency are mainly conjunctivitis patient may develop and perioral rash the patient may develop so with the clue of raw egg and alopecia we can make the diagnosis of biotin in this case we know niacin already we discussed there are three d will be there in pellagra those are not in the clues if we see in riboflavin it is mainly related to angular stomatitis there is nothing to do with alopecia so the answer here is biotin next we are going to see about the questions asked in sexually transmitted diseases and hiv the question is a woman with multiple sexual partners presented with vaginal discharge the examination showed erosions in the cervix which kit is to be used option a green option b gray option c blue option d red we have discussed multiple times about the importance of sexually transmitted diseases kits syndromic kits it is a potential examination question we have discussed multiple times in vsv sessions regular sessions and even for a mock test also we have included the questions same way it is uh, asked here in this we will see about the clues first there are two clues in this one is the patient is having vaginal discharge the second is there is erosions in the cervix this question if you see if it is a vaginal discharge that it will be different cervical discharge that it will be different first we will see the clues green gray blue red if you see blue and red kits are mainly for the ulcer these are for genital ulcer so these two options are not correct we end up in two options one is green another is a gray green kit is we know it is for vaginal discharge gray kit is for cervical or urethral discharge here the two options are given like uh, vaginal discharge is also there and erosion in the cervix also given in the question so you may get confused so for that first we will try to conclude what can be the diagnosis with the vaginal discharge we have discussed the condition in trichomonas vaginalis infection there is a thing you know there is a strawberry cervix strawberry cervix is nothing but there will be multiple erosions in the cervix which are given appearance of strawberry so only it is known as strawberry cervix so here they indirectly given the history about the trichomonas vaginalis and vaginal discharge so this erosions in the cervix is a somewhat a diverting point so we have to go only with the vaginal discharge clue so for vaginal discharge the treatment is green kit containing fluconazole and secnidazole erosion in the cervix is due to trichomonas vaginalis so it is just a confusing point that's all here in the image you can see there are multiple red dots in the cervix in trichomonas vaginalis this kit is very important you have to know all seven kits for subsequent examinations also you can expect this the next question is a patient presented with painless genital ulcer with painless lymphadenopathy the diagnosis is option a syphilis option b herpes genitalis option c chancroid and option d granuloma inguinal this was also discussed prior through using this uh, flow chart we have discussed in the flow chart we will see if there is a painless ulcer it can be three one is syphilis another is donovanosis another is lgv chancroid and herpes genitalis are painful genital ulcers so 
in the option sancroid and herpes genital is a route because they are painful now there is the second clue there is a painless lymphadenopathy there is a lymph node enlargement or bubo we know granuloma inguinal is characterized by pseudo bubo granuloma inguinal is characterized by pseudo bubo which is nothing but the extension of infection in the inguinal region there won't be lymphadenopathy no lymphadenopathy it will be only that the extension of the abscess or infection so with these two clues the granuloma inguinal option is also out so we are uh, only remaining with syphilis so syphilis is the answer here we know syphilis is characterized by painless indurated ulcers with painless inguinal bubo or lymphadenopathy and the painless genital ulcer the cause of syphilis donovanosis and lgv for painful it is chancroid and herpes genitalis donovanosis doesn't cause pu bubo or inguinal lymphadenopathy so the option is out we, the answer is syphilis for this question fine next a retro positive patient presented with skin lesions all over the body the diagnosis is molluscum contagiosum cryptococcosis histoplasmosis you will see the image i don't have the exact image i had the image with multiple implicated papules have been given in the question paper the funny part is all three of this will have implicated papules but the characteristic one is molluscum contagiosum but cryptococcosis and histoplasmosis also the skin lesions are molluscum like lesions all three are implicated i am not able to get the exact question for this uh, if they have given some additional clues like uh, lung involvement then it have been directly histoplasmosis if they have given some cns involvement it would have been directly cryptococcosis so if they have given skin with lung involvement it is more towards histoplasmosis if they have given skin with the cns involvement it is cryptococcosis another clue is like if they have given something like cd4 count less than 150 it is more towards histoplasmosis less than 100 to 50 to 100 it is cryptococcosis so i don't have the exact option of cd4 count or associated features so those are the possibilities if nothing is given like that no cd4 count or uh, about the systemic involvements it is more towards molluscum contagiosum because molluscum contagiosum it is more common in hiv and the lesions are very big giant lesions the image itself you can see there is a giant lesions here so based on the other clues we can make out otherwise it is difficult to tell which one is the answer for this question next question is like a hiv patient presented with following oral lesions the diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma melanoma and kaposi sarcoma you see the image in the hot palette and soft palette there is a orange or a violaceous mass with corrugations so if if such appearance is there violaceous or reddish lesion it is more towards a vascular tumor and whenever you see hiv the tumor which will come to our mind is kaposi sarcoma which is a vascular tumor so the answer here is kaposi sarcoma we know melanoma it is not melanoma because melanoma will be black or very dark in color right basal cell carcinoma this is not the common sign it is common in the near the eyelids nose and cheeks with beaded borders you see squamous cell carcinoma which will have a ulcerative proliferative growth
So for this question, the best option is Kaposi sarcoma because two things. One is the patient is HIV positive, another is the morphology of the lesions. Next, the questions are asked in infectious dermatosis. An asthmatic patient presented with whitish patches in the tank, what is the treatment? Option A, griseofulvin. Option B, terbinafin. Option C, flucytosin. Option D, clotrimazole. This question is basically a pulmonary medicine or general medicine question. Just because it has lesions in the mucosa, I have added in this part. First, the first clue given here is asthmatic patients having white lesions in the tank. You see, if there is an asthma patient, we know the first line of treatment is meter dose inhaler steroids. If they use steroids regularly, there will be deposition of steroids in the mucosal cavity. So, there is a possibility of candidal growth. Right? So, the whitish patches in the tongue may be a candidiasis. Now, we came to the diagnosis. Now, what is the treatment? If you see the options, greasyopolvin is a drug specifically indicated for dermatophytosis. So, it won't be useful in candidial infection. The same way terpenopin is also more indicated in dermatophytosis. So, it is also out. We are only leaving with two things. One is flucytosin and clotrimazole. We know clotrimazole and flucytosin both can be used. Flucytosin is more for severe lesions, more severe fungal infections. Like candida, severe candidiasis, cryptococcosis, candidemia, you, you can use. So the option is clotrimazole. Clotrimazole pain is commonly used. Candid mouth pain, it is available in over the counter sales. Clotrimazole oral pain is commonly used in oral candidiasis. So the option, correct option is clotrimazole. The next question as uh, this complex spots with rash over the face, the diagnosis. Uh, options are measles, rubella, mumps, dengue. In this question, it is very easy. We know whenever there is a complex spot, you will directly go to the diagnosis of uh, measles. That is there. But many of you may confuse with another condition known as rubella. Rubella also there can be oral lesions. The difference is the complex spots are white spots present in the buccal mucosa opposite to molar, first molar which is characteristic in measles. Porcimer spots are characteristic of rubella which are present in the palate rather than buccal mucosa. So the option rubella is out, the answer is measles. Complex spots with rash over the face. Mums there will be rash only parotid involvement in dengue, there can be petechiae and there is a special cutaneous finding we have discussed. There is a islands of white in sea of red. There will be generalized rash with areas of sparing. So the answer here is measles. The next thing. The next thing is a 10th standard boy presented with pleomorphic rash with fever. Similar complaints were noted in roommates. Further management in all individuals will be. Option A, immunoglobulin. Option B, vaccine. Option C, isolation. Option D, acyclovir. In this, first, first point is like, whenever there is a complaints presented in the other roommates also, there is no point in giving the preventive things like immunoglobulin or vaccines. So those are out. Mostly we will confuse with two things. We have to treat the condition or not treat the condition. Because in children, we used to tell there is no need of treating the case. So we, you may confuse with isolation or acyclovir. But CDC guidelines says if the patient ages more than 12 years, there is a more possibility of uh, immunosuppression and there is a possibility of more uh, complications in age more than 12 years or uh, immunosuppressed individuals. So you have to treat the patient with acyclovir. 
if the option they have given 10 standard boy and the other patients also develop this the better thing is like treat with acyclovir so the point here is 10 standard boy means it may be 14 or 15 or 16 years old na so if the age is more than 12 years as per uh, center for disease control and treatment the better treatment is treat with antivirals if it is less than 12 years you can just isolate bed rest will be sufficient other topics like they were asked a patient using a day presented with itching and periorbital edema which component is causing this an image was given in the question paper with the periorbital edema the options given are para penicillin diamine hexachromate pollen and balsam of peru the allergen present in the hair dye is ppd para penicillin diamine we have already discussed this so the answer here is ppd you see hexachromate is commonly present in cement pollen are containing parthenium which is causing allergy in farmers so we have already discussed this point hair dye contains uh, allergen known as para penicillin diamine or ppd that is the correct answer here next a child presented with following skin lesions over the face what is the likely complications a cataract b glaucoma c visual loss for this malignant melanoma uh, i heard the, something similar to this image was given like the patient is having hyperpigmented lesion over the face one side with hair growth over that area you can make out so it is a more possibly it is a congenital melanocytic nevus it is big so it is known as gn congenital melanocytic nevus the criteria is more than 20 cm size with more hair growth in that area which is gn congenital melanocytic nevus whenever there is a gn congenital melanocytic nevus the, if you find this the answer will be easy Whenever there is a GNCMN, the complication will be malignant transformation, which is malignant melanoma. Right? Here also you can see the similar image, which was given in the workbook also. Next, a construction worker presented with white discoloration of fingers intermittently. What is the likely cause? Cement due to vibrations, wet hand causing candidiasis, pain with thinness. These are the options given. Here the Clues are the patient, uh, the person is a construction worker. The second is he is having intermittent discoloration of fingers. What is the likely cause? If you see option by option, cement is an allergen it lead to allergic contact dermatitis. So they would have given something like a rash, itching. Those will be given in that. Na? So those are not given. So cement is not in the not the correct answer. So it is out. Same way, pain with inner also can lead to dermatitis. With similar things like rash, itching, those clues are not given. So, pain with inner is also not the answer. So, we are done with the two options. Other two options are due to vibration or wet hand causing candidiasis. Wet hand causing candidiasis can be a possibility because he is a construction worker. He used to do more uh, water related work. He will mix the things and all. Na? But the point is, whenever there is a candidiasis in the hands, it will involve the web spaces. It doesn't involve the fingers. It involves mainly web spaces. Here they are mainly mentioning there is a discoloration of fingers. The two intermittent. So, the candidate is also an unlikely option. So, the probable answer here is due to vibrations. Something like this patient may, might have doubt of that, like intermittent whitening. It is also known as Reynolds. Reynolds phenomena, you know, there is a three different color changes due to vasoconstriction, like white, blue, red. white, blue, red color change. Reynolds can be uh, classified into two things, primary or secondary. It, that due, due to idiopathic or autoimmune conditions like uh, SLE or other connective tissue disorders, cold exposure. 
one of the important cause for a secondary Reynolds or Reynolds phenomena is vibration. Excessive vibration can lead to spasmodic contraction of blood vessels. So it can lead to vasoconstriction and white color. So the answer here is due to vibrations. The next question is an obese lady presented with acne lesions treated with oral antibiotics and oral isotretinoin but not responsive to those treatments. The lesions are recurrent in nature. What is the next step? Option A, look for any drug trigger. B, dietary modification. C, look for hormonal evaluation. D, look for antibiotic resistance. In this directly you can rule out two options. Antibiotic resistance won't be the cause because we have tried oral isotretinoin also. So if they have antibiotic resistance, they would have responded to oral isotretinoin. Na? So this option is excluded. Then dietary modification. For acne, diet can alter the course to very little extent. The main part is drugs only. Diet can prevent the further aggravation, something like that. It won't help in complete clearance of the disease. So dietary modification is also out. Now we will go to the clues. The patient is an obese lady presented with acne lesions. Whenever there is an obese lady, there is more possibility of hormonal imbalance and there is a more possibility of PCOS, hyperandrogenism, insulin resistance. So those are the causes will lead to very persistent acne in post-adult ladies. So, for, the, for this question, the correct answer is look for hormonal evaluation. Drug trigger is out because the patient is not having other features like itching or any history of other, uh, other illnesses. History of other illness like seizure, tuberculosis, something like that. Those are not given, so that point is also out. So the answer is look for hormonal evaluation. The main clue is the obese lady with non-responsive skin lesions. Even to oral antibiotics and oral isotretinoin, you have to look for hormonal evaluation for PCOS, insulin resistance and all. Yes, these were the questions asked. For acne, we know these are the treatment options. For different severities, comedonal, papillopastillary, nodulocystic, we have discussed already. These were the questions asked in need. Actually, we expected around 7 to 10 questions in them, but they have asked more than that. Mainly because there is an overlap, there are some confusions in some questions. So, these are the possible explanations and the correct answers for each question. I hope the session is helpful for everyone. Thank you.